Hello YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how you can take an image, add it inside a hexagon shape and then apply a realistic shadow underneath all within Adobe Illustrator. So I've got my document to start with, I'm going to go over here, left click and hold on the rectangle tool and go down and select polygon tool. Now left click anywhere on the artboard, select 6 as a number of sides, the radius doesn't matter, click OK and you will get a hexagon. Now if you hold down shift and scale from one of the corners you can bring this up proportionally and if your hexagon shape isn't already like this you want to rotate it so if your hexagon shape was created like this just select the rotate tool hold shift and rotate it 90 degrees no yes yes 90 degrees until it is up on its end like this so the points are pointing up and down and we're just going to give that a fill color for now so let's select black I'll just make it a bit bigger so you can see there now I've also got my photo it's a picture of our cat Willow isn't he super super cute so we'll just move him to one side for now so what we're going to do this is where the photo is going to sit within the hexagon but we're going to create the shadow so if we just left click and hold and select the ellipse tool and we're just going to draw something like this a very very narrow ellipse now above your palette you've got this little double arrow here I'm going to click that because when working with gradients I like to be able to see my gradients and my swatches at the same time so with this ellipse selected we can click anywhere on the gradient inside the gradient palette and it will add this default gradient now what we want is we want white on the left edge we want the black to be in the middle so we can click and drag that and then we can also click anywhere along the bottom you'll see next to your arrow that there's a little plus symbol so just click that and it will add another gradient so we can put that all the way over to the right and then I can click the white swatch and drag this on top of this little gradient marker here and it will apply that color so we've got white on the left and the right sides and then the black in the middle which is perfect now at the moment the gradient is very hard edged we want that to be a lot softer because we're going to be creating a realistic shadow so let's just select that shape go up to effect down to blur select Gaussian blur tick the preview box and you can adjust this as you need to so I think I'm gonna go for something around let's try four and see how that looks and when creating realistic shadows it's usually going to take a little bit of tinkering a little bit of fiddling around with different settings probably adjusting the gradient just to get something that you're happy with so because this shape is a hexagon and it is up on its end here this point in the middle is going to be a lot darker the shadow is going to be a lot darker because this point here is a lot closer to the ground and as you move out to the left and the right side the distance between the hexagon over here and over here is greater so there is a lot more distance from the ground so the shadow is going to be a lot softer so if we just move this up just make sure that our shadow is underneath the shape so just go up select the shape go to object arrange and center back just to make sure that it is underneath so feel free to adjust your gradient until you're happy you can of course select the ends and bring this in holding alt which will bring the gradient in equally from both sides until you're happy and in the appearance palette you can select Gaussian blur and adjust this if you like further so I might just increase mine up to five pixels of blur something like that and then another thing you can do you can either amend the swatches so rather than the black in the middle you could drag a darker gray instead so that's one way or you can select transparency in the palette and then reduce the opacity and that will reduce the gradient opacity as a whole so once you're happy with your gradient and you've finished adjusting that I'm just going to zoom out we're going to drag our image over half of our 
hexagon shape. Select that bit of the hexagon sticking out. Go up to Object, Transform, no, Object, Arrange, bring to front, so our hexagon is on top. Hold down Shift and left click on the photo as well, so now they are both selected. And then we're going to go to Object, Clipping Mask and Make. And what will happen is it will crop the image of Willow the Cat inside the hexagon, like so. Now obviously this isn't the ideal crop, so we can double click on that. It will take us inside the clipping group here. We can adjust the crop as we need to. We can scale it down, of course, until we get a crop that we're happy with. We want it to obviously go over the ends as well. We don't want something like this because then we can't see the rest of the hexagon shape. So this image needs to fill the entire hexagon shape. So, and you can adjust it with the arrow keys as well. Just tap the arrow keys to nudge the image into place. And when you're happy, you can just click these back arrows here and it will take you back out into the document. Now one other thing we can do is we can select this image. You'll see now that Willow the Cat is cropped inside of that hexagon shape. We can go up to Effect, down to Stylize and select Round Corners. Select Preview, adjust the radius and it will round off the corners of that hexagon. This is your personal preference but it will then once you've done that it will add this effect into the appearance palette so you can select round corners, adjust again at a later date if you want or you can delete the effect altogether. But for now, I'm going to keep this effect. And there we go. We've taken a photo, cropped it inside a hexagon, added a realistic shadow, all within Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.